Hey, what's up, everybody? Video 44 coming at you another video. All right. Uh, father and son topics. I don't have any kids. My father's long gone. So it's one of those situations where it's like the only reason why I would think I would even be qualified to lend myself to this conversation is because of what I've seen in other people's lives and what I feel. Um, just for the situation as it pertains to somebody who, uh, you know, who's just been kind of following it. So my, my, my perspective only holds but so much weight. But I think those who listen to what I have to say most of the time will probably still stick around because usually something good will come out of it. 50 Cent and his son Marcus. You know, this is a personal situation. So the first thing I want to say is I don't know those folks. Uh, I wish them well. This is not minor in regards to their, their circumstances and whatever's between them is personal to them. And I ain't got no say so or no point of view on that. Uh, no opinion that should matter or anything like that. So this is just a personal person person releasing their own opinions based on stuff they're seeing on the internet. That's all I'm bringing to the table. I ain't nobody in regards to this. But when you talk about um, this situation, I just want to say that I've long wanted to see uh, 50 come to a space where um, he has peace about all his kids, whatever that looks like, you know what I mean? And so I know that, that Marcus has been uh, in the public eye for a while, and, and the, the narrative that's been out there for us to understand is that his mother has um, long been trying to get um, 50 Cent to, to provide more monetarily, however that looks. Um, and now Marcus has grown and it appears to me, it appears to me that Marcus is trying to step out on his own um, and more or less try to let everybody know that, you know, I, I am interested in, in connecting with my father. I don't really understand why he's taking certain positions. I think I'm misunderstood. And that's what I'm hearing there. I think that's what the young man is saying. I'm misunderstood. People think it's about the money. It's not about the money. It's about the relationship. I think in listening to him have a conversation yesterday with Choke No Joke and another individual, I uh, wasn't familiar who the other guy was, but I thought it was good content. But listening to him, I think the disconnect for 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 uh, Marcus was when he was trying to express to choke no joke that um, 50 Cent put himself on child support and that he didn't understand why, why 50 Cent could complain about child support when he put himself on it. That's a big disconnect for the young fella because I don't think he understands the fullness of what could go wrong in that circumstance, especially when it's as much of a fortune as 50 has. When you agree to something like that, you're worth one amount of money. When things progress later on, you're worth a whole lot more, man, and that changes the dynamic of what it is you would agree to, but not the percentages from which they're going to take. So if he agreed to give you 7000 a month or whatever it would be, once he starts inflating his money up to wherever it went, now that 7000 turns into maybe some seven million or something a month so it can get crazy for him and that it's not what he signed up for it's not what he agreed to and so that's why one could complain about something that they signed up for because things change man and dynamics change as well and so um here's what i think i understand decent is hustler bro he came out of the trenches he came from real circumstances very real circumstances and he pulled himself out of those circumstances and made himself the biggest star in the world uh, in terms of rap. And then when his rap career started to slow down, he picked up in, 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 in TV and kept it pushing, picked up G-Unit clothing, did all these different things. At the end of the day, he doesn't slow down, bro. And coming from where he's coming from, he don't have no respect for somebody who's sitting there with a handout at all. If you, you know, And that's what I would say to Marcus. I was like, if you're following your dad, bro, He's not upset that you want your money. I don't think he's upset at the fact that you don't say you don't have that grind inside of you that he has. He looks at you, you have all these features, but you're representing him in a way that he is the opposite of what he's about. This is somebody who was up 200 M's and was still grinding. That's what he was trying to express to us in regards to his comrades and some of his brothers that he was in rap with. They didn't have the hunger he had, he couldn't respect it. You know, I remember how he was he was um, handling certain things in regards to people he was uh, doing a, a reality show and it was a young man in front of him you know the last person I thought fit would would hold him accountable for how he was dressing was 50 cent but it was 50 
50 was like, nah, bro, you got to put on a certain type of suit. If you're going to be in this environment, you got to wear, you got to hold yourself a certain way. You can't just come in here with what you know. You got to present yourself as well. So when I look at him and that's what he was teaching someone who was a subordinate underneath him, then I look at Curtis as, uh, Marcus and how he's behaving. If it, that, that irritates the hell out of 50 to me from where I'm sitting, that type of energy, that's everything that's against him. If he were to adapt that energy, he'd still be in the hood, probably dead. If, 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 if he were to be like his son, he wouldn't have made it. He wouldn't have the money that the son is, is, is saying that he wants him to break bread with. And I think that's what 50 has been kind of alluding to for this long time. He said, you know, it's more or less like the baby mom has kind of incorporated that idea that I'm supposed to, I'm entitled to because attitude. And he didn't want his son to have that because that that's the opposite of what gets him through his life. That's the opposite of what it takes to survive in 50's world. He's worried his son probably wouldn't make it in the world he in. He knows his son wouldn't make it in the world he in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's what's, that's what's bothering him, I believe. I think that's what the underlining thing is from afar. Looking at it, um, that's what that's what it feel like to me. Like, nah, bro, my grind is too strong. Let me sit up here watching you sitting up here telling the world that I'm not giving you enough. What? And then, you you know, when... When you have your son, you're watching him being raised and he starts to develop that way. You start to see those things manifest, you know, in probably certain situations. Who knows? I can see why 50's been so outspoken about how unhappy he is about that situation. I could clearly see why he's deliberately showing us his love for his other son. It's hurtful, but I think 50 feels hurt. I think 50 feels hurt by the fact that his son's not only like this, but now he's bucking back at his father. You know what I mean? More or less for not. Not embracing that weakness, more or less. I mean, I think about what it takes to survive in a world like 50s, and, and I just look around and I say, man, you have to be repulsed by something like that because the way you see something like that is it's weak. So it's going to drag you down too. Everything you've been built that, that seed would be the one that brings you down, I think, in his mind, if I'm projecting in. So it's like, nah, I can see why he doesn't want to embrace Marcus, but what I also see is Marcus growing up. What I also see is Marcus in a space where the rubber reads the road as it pertains to certain ideas that he has in his mind. Now he can't ha he doesn't have anybody to just agree with some of that stuff. Now he's facing the world out here and now he's starting to see how he looks as a man when he has these conversations. And I think that provides a certain different perspective. Now you take this back to mommy and it's like, wait a minute, did you misguide me or what? Was dad right all along? Should I have been out here more so hustling like that? Why I'm, why is he rejecting me? Why you know, and, it, and that's what the conversation needed to be all along, I think. Listen to what 50's perspective has been. Like, so, I think 50 should take the olive brands. I know he probably doesn't trust his son. He probably thinks his son is trying to find a way to get some money out of him. But even if he is, this is your seat. At the end of the day, you lay your head down, you're going to want to know what happens here. And if you don't, if you leave your guard up with this kid and he continues to hate you for the rest of your life, that's going to have a reverberating effect on a lot of things. But you take this olive branch and he blows it, at least you can say you gave it to him. That karma's on him. But if 50 continues to put a block up against his son, just like any father, I think it can be uh, something that you regret on your deathbed. That's the best thing I can say from my perspective. Um, you know what I mean? Even if he doesn't live up to your standards or whatever, even if he's not, so whatever, at the end of the day. When I was looking at that camera, there was a moment there where that young man, Marcus, leaned into the camera and all you could see with his eyes, and I couldn't tell that he was not his father. They're the same eyes, exact same eyes, exact same top of their head. So when you when you when you really understand that, uh, you you get that a lot of times people be stuck in how they feel in the moment, right? But they start to understand what's real to them if something were to happen to somebody like that. You know what I mean? If something were to happen to either one of them, you would see. You would see to understand how they really feel about each other. Yeah, 50 talked about how he shoot his son. He did that scene. I think he did that scene with his son in my mind, to be honest with you. I said that when I was watching Power. <laughs> and for those who don't know, there was a scene that he filmed at the end of his original series, Power, where he, his character shot his son. Um, you know, just that completely killed his son. And so I think 50 wrote that in the script um, for his real son. I think he did. You know, I did. I do. I think I don't think he would actually hurt his son, but I also think that he's hurt enough to let his son be hurt like that in terms of, uh, you know, seeing that that his father feels that way about him. So 
You know, it's just, it's what it is. You you want people to be warmer to one another, but you also understand that, you know, warm thing. What got them there? <laughs> cold is what got them there. You know, cold is why we know a fifty cent. And so, um, you know what I mean. I think at the end of the day, what fifty will probably run into in life if he doesn't help this situation is he's going to find that the son that he keeps close and Marcus, they're going to have an interaction of some sort. Either they're going to get along or not, but that's going to affect things. You, you know, you can keep people separated for so long, but, it, 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 you know, eventually they're going to come together because they're brothers. Someday, someday. Maybe that's the day when 50's old as hell and, and, and it's talk, time to talk about who's getting what. But that's going to be the day when he wishes back in 2022, he took that phone call and had that sit down with Marcus. That's that's the real thing. That's why you do it. That's why you do it. Because you don't want any trouble with those two or any other kids that 50 has in the future. You don't want any misunderstandings that took place starting today. You know what I mean? Got to see that angle. Because at the end of the day, yes, there's, there's a dynamic this, that, and the third, but the way the world is looking at it, you're treating one son really, 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 really special, and you're letting the other son sit out here and look crazy. And while that's your right, and people have their own family dynamics, when it's all public, and everybody got their opinion all in it, it can affect a lot of different things. And we know how corporate 50 years, so I would tell him, you've been teetering on this space where it's okay to have your house not in order in this way, but now that he's talking, and he's in our faces, and people are able to dispute some of his nonsense, all he's going to be left with is a need to talk to his father. After all the bull crap goes out the way, he's still a guy who's going to need to talk to his dad. And that's, you know, that's who Fifth is. That's who Fifth is. So, I, you know, it is what it is, man. I wish everybody the best. Uh, like I said, I weigh in on this from afar. I don't know anybody. There's a lot of numbers involved in these situations, a lot of money involved in the situations. So that... That can, that can lead for a lot of stuff that's not as simple as sitting down and having conversations. And so I get that. I get that. I, I love to think things are as simple as, as people getting along because I know when you peel back the layers of a lot of things, that's where compromise is found. A lot of these most com complicated issues, even though they're not as simple as sitting down, a lot of times when you get to what it is, it actually does barrel down to sitting down. That's what I've learned in life. Like, oh, so much we got to do. And then after they get through all the numbers and the lawyers, at that settlement table, it's like, well, we could have came to a conclusion. You know what I'm saying? All you had to do was, oh, yeah. And all you had to do is stuff that you need to be thinking about right now rather than letting it get to that point. So that's what I would say. That's why I make videos like this. I don't think there's no other reason for me to walk the earth, honestly. I'm serious. Then they just apply my mind to various different things. I ain't got nothing to do with it. <laughs> I really believe that. And a lot of times I pray about certain things and the Lord be giving me answers or my mind, the way that it works, it can just kind of see certain wisdom, I guess you can say, that maybe may be eluded from certain people. And the fact that I'm fearless in regards to who I'm willing to speak about, uh, because a lot of people guard against having conversations that they have nothing to do with. A lot of perspectives that I think people have that would help never get offered. So I figure, hey, man, I'll be the guy. I'll be the one guy just says, you know what, I'm just going to speak on whatever comes to mind. If I have nothing to do with it, consequences, whatever. I think people, if they were to sit down with me, they'd understand I don't mean no harm. You know what I mean? Like I literally be wanting people to be all right. So, however that looks, that's what I wish for the for the for the Jackson family. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, I, I don't know these folks. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, uh, when 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 artists contribute a lot to the culture, uh, I think a lot of times they get the the idea that the public don't give a damn. It's like you're supposed to be a figure of my entertainment, and then after that, I'm not supposed to care about your well-being. But that's not how we celebrate people. That's not how we celebrate them after they die. I've had so many times where I've set and legitimately celebrated the life of somebody that gave a lot of art and this and that. third. So in my mind, when I'm sitting there thinking about how they passed, I wish I would have lended my voice to the things that would have made their lives better. I wish I could have been in a place where I could sit down with them and say, yo, your art ain't the only thing that you contributed. Your energy through that art mattered and that you live your life in a way that doesn't suck. It's something that is a it's a plus to me as, a, as somebody who enjoys what you do. So that's how I feel, man. That's what's in my heart. So I'm like, look, these artists give us a lot, but they don't take back a whole lot of positivity. They need to know that there's a fan out there who say, yo, yeah, I'm rooting for you to win in life, not just in art, but in life. I saw something yesterday, man. I know Rich Boy is going through it. 
MC had an issue in his personal life. And I saw some people met up with him in a grocery store. Looked like he was having a hard day, but they met up with him and they say, yo, Rich Boy, we love you, man. Got him on camera. They say, we doing good. He's doing good. It's, it's all up here from there. I know he woke up this morning feeling a lot better about his life because he had some energy from some people that still appreciated his art. You know what I'm saying? And that's what it is it's about. Especially as an artist, I know how much that can propel us to be an even greater artist when we know that the public, at least a few people, are rooting for us to win outside of what it is that we do. So that keeps us going, man. And so I, I think 50 could use some of that. And that's what I'm doing. So, yeah, man, appreciate Curtis Jackson's art and the things he's brought to the game. And so why not root for the man to succeed with his family, right? Video 44. I thank you all for watching. I'm out.